right, welcome to uh, the second of uh, our Rubismo Cafe Talks in this circle about innovation. Uh, this is Rubismo, the Rural Business Model Project financed by Horizon 2020, where we are trying to find new, new business models for especially three sectors, food, bio-based value chains and ecosystem services. And um, hope that this series will, be, it's a part of our, uh, where we disseminate the knowledge that we've built through the project. Uh, this is the first out of four circles where we will have uh, coming up also January through March, the three uh, new uh, topics. Today uh, we have uh, the, the, um, the first circle is about how Europe can anticipate and support rural innovation. And our second cafe now today is with Gerard, Gerard Schiefer, I'm very welcome to you Gerard. Uh, talking to us about new rural development opportunities and the focus on food and renewables, which I am looking forward to. Uh, and as you can see, there is also a new speech coming next Tuesday. And also uh, on, in two weeks, we have a virtual study visit at Christina Barry Marine Research Center. So that said, very welcome to all of you. And I leave the floor over to Gerard for an introductory speech. Oh. Thank you very much. While, while Gerard is speaking, you are very welcome to, to use the chat to ask questions to Gerard, and then we will bring those questions up um, at the end of the speech. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Thomas. Okay, now we can start. Let me start with a statement. And the statement is that I think the future could be rural the future of Europe and some other parts of the world, if we take up the opportunities that are emerging. Now, one of the questions we have to answer, why are we interested in rural areas? When we look at the world map, you see that there is something happening. People, technology, services, everything is moving from rural areas to the urban areas. You look at the United States, you look at Asia, and you look at Europe, the red ones are the urban areas, the green ones are the rural areas. Why is that happening? I think there is something tremendous or uh, terrible, not, maybe not terrible, this may be a wrong word, but something uh, critical changing in the relationships between rural and urban environments. If we look at the traditional relevance or the traditional balance between the rural and the urban areas, you can see when you look back in the history from the 16th century on, it was over some kind of a stability. A certain percentage of uh, uh, people was li were living in urban areas and the others were living in rural areas. And then all of a sudden, this traditional balance was disturbed you see that there is a tremendous trend towards urban uh, populations. There's a new imbalance and that creates problems. When we look at the urban part, we have problems of overpopulation. We look at the rural parts, we have problems of depopulation. And then we uh, have something people call megacities. So that's part of the overpopulation problems. And when we look at the rural part, we have empty lands, lots of services, lots of jobs, lots of opportunities. Now the question is what to do. The rural areas are still there. They are not disappearing. Sometimes you could say, okay, rural is out, rural is disappearing, everything is urban. That's not happening. The rural environments are still there, but there are these increasing disparities between the urban and the rural areas. Now, what to do? I like this proposal of economists. You know, economists are always uh, very interesting people. And they say the easiest way is pay people in the rural areas to get them to the urban areas. So let the rural areas be uh, by themselves. So that's the cheapest way to move forward. That's a negative approach. But we also could have a positive approach. And the positive approach would mean that we try to eliminate all the classical disadvantages of rural areas. We have a low density of population. That means no services. It's not uh, worthwhile. 
with a big distance to urban centers, so we cannot use urban services. And on the other side, we could utilize potential advantages. We have renewable resources, we produce food, which is important, and we have a beautiful, maybe a beautiful natural environment. So I would say we have opportunities there. And let me say one thing which I think is true. We have opportunities as never before if, and I say it a second time, if we realize the competitive advantages rural areas have. And there have been good ideas. I go back to the year 2007. The OECD had a conference in Madrid about innovative rural regions. They had very good ideas. They said, okay, what we need to do is to improve the capacity of rural areas to create innovation. So we have to do something. And the idea was that we invest in education, that we provide financial support to enterprises, that we invest in ICT to bridge the digital divide, and we invest in networking so that people can work together and uh, get engaged in innovative approaches. And I add also, you should invest in logistic capacities. So that sounded good. And then they had another conference in 2018. So 11 late years later, another OECD conference in Edinburgh. And when you look now at this list, what should be done to increase the capacity of rural areas to innovate, you find exactly the same words finance, ICT, education, networking. So nothing has changed. So the perspective is very clear what we need to support the innovation capacity of rural areas. A different question is what has been done. Now, if we have been looking at uh, the multi-political side, but there were also business groups that were engaged and said, we should do also something from our side that it was a European network for rural development. They looked at the business part and said, let's move from our side. And what did they come up with? They said, yes, business should engage. We should engage in providing rural services. We should engage in maybe new types of entrepreneurships, maybe activating new markets. We should try to reorganize our food supply and other supply chains to keep some of the business value, uh, value in rural areas. Now, okay, you have two groups who think they should be active. The policy group on one side, that's the right one, and the business group on the left side. So we link both, and then we see those things should fit together. Engagement by business on the left side, engagement by sole policy on the other side. Now let me look at some of those business initiatives that are mentioned here. New rural businesses, new supply chains, new services. And there are in principle three basic examples that could be realized. First, we discuss, discuss about eliminating deficiencies. Then we discuss about utilizing new opportunities. And then we discuss about uh, engagements for exploiting strength. When we look at the elimination of deficiencies, okay, it comes immediately up information and logistics technology because it reduces the relevance of space. It facilitates service deliveries, knowledge exchange, etc. When we discuss about new opportunities, we come back to food and renewable resources. And when we talk about the exploitation of strengths, we discuss about business opportunities related to the activation of ecosystem services. Let me first look at the first part. And this list is tremendous. I'm always getting overwhelmed when I look at that, such a list. They, um, I call it unlimited evolving opportunities. Online education, online trading, logistics, online information communication, remote working, online health, et cetera, et cetera. Let me just look at the first three ones. Online education, I don't think we have to discuss it. Now in our crisis at the moment, we are so much uh, involved in this online education activities. But also when we look at online trading, you all know, and logistics con concepts, where there are a lot of developments. 
going on. I just take one picture. I like this very much because we see here a warehouse moving back to rural areas. It's by the way, it's an example of Amazon, but it could be others. If, now I come back to our ifs, if the logistic infrastructure is there, if ICT is there, then you generate jobs, you allow services to be de developed and so on. Let's go to the second part, utilizing new opportunities, which I think is a very challenging, challenging uh, development. When you look at this list, you see on the left all the different types of crops we have uh, that could be grown in the rural area. And then you see all the type of products that could be developed out of them that focus on a certain uh, uh, type of material, like on the right one, talk about biofuels, fiber, pharmaceuticals, biopulse. So it's a tremendous possibility that's opening up there. And one of the things I always uh, try to push, the logistics favor rural areas. Why? Because the, the initial crops, the initial material is a bulk material. And from an economic logistic point of view, it doesn't make sense to transport the bulk material to some other processing place. It's much easier to uh, um, allocate the processing to where the bulk product is. So in principle, logistics is good for this. Now I just uh, show you a few examples. You see on the top, our chemicals to rapport, which we use for insulation material. And you see how it's, uh, its composition, okay, all the different cells. And then you look at the lower line, all the different types of plants that are being uh, analyzed to talk about miscanthus, elanthus, silphium. And you look at the structure, it's almost the same. And that's where things are happening at the moment that people develop insulation material out of plants. Same when we look at paper that comes out from grass. And uh, when you look a little bit about uh, what people are doing when they talk about using grass for paper, grass is much more suitable than wood because the fiber can be taken much, much easier out of grass than out of wood. So that's one of those uh, developments that might occur. Now, the third one, when we talk about activating ecosystems, I don't think I have to discuss much about this. We know about the environment. We know about touristic activities. So we have three elements which favor rural areas if they are taken, uh, 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 if they are being implemented. Now, the question is how to start. That's usually the most difficult part. How to get businesses integrating in new value chains that deliver value to the final customers uh, in urban areas. We have big problems because when you develop such new markets, new products, you don't have an existing chain model. You don't have experience, the markets are new, you have new technologies, and that's usually very difficult for established business organizations, which have their processes, and their processes are uh, efficient, but very focused. And that opens up, and I think that's where many people don't really realize it, it opens up the, uh, uh, the room for new business stakeholders, especially startups. And we look at the scenes to find many startups that are specifically engaged in those new developments. But we have difficulties, and one of the difficulties are they need finance, they need management support, etc. That brings me back to our two groups up there, the policy to the right and the business development to the left. We have to match them, we'll get them together. And then there comes up the question on what implication does it have for policy and for the business economy? We have to get both things together. On one side, the entrepreneurs who get engaged, but they will not uh, succeed if the right side, the policy part, is not being implemented. And when you look back on the OEC policies about the 2007, 2018, when you see, okay, how little has been done in many, many areas, it's not working. It's not working business alone. It's not working policy alone. Both have to act simultaneously. And I think that's a challenge for the future. And that's my final statement. We think we have a rule century. It could be a rule century but only if we get such joint initiatives together. And the question is to us and to policy and many other groups, will it be feasible? Yes or no. Thank you very much.